Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be talking about hashtag includes and using namespace STD. The point of this is not to show you where to use it, but to show you, uh, to explain what is going on, how it actually works, so that when we move on to more advanced topics, you'll just have a basic understanding of, of what's going on and why you do this. I'm assuming you've used this plenty of times, but maybe some of you don't, uh, as, as was the case with myself, uh, didn't really understand what was going on, like why I did this, really. So um, starting off with uh, this hashtag here, anytime you see a hashtag, this is denoting a command for the preprocessor. So before it reads all your code and tries to compile anything, the preprocessor is gonna it's gonna read through this, and it, when it sees a hashtag, it's gonna go, okay, that's a command for me. Uh, this next part, this include, is essentially a function. So it's telling the preprocessor in this case to look inside these carrots, and that's gonna give it a file name uh, for a library to go find that library. And what it does when it finds that library, it literally copies and pastes that entire library into an executable file above your code. So before the program reads any of your code, it's gonna literally, it's gonna read this hashtag include, it's gonna go find that library and it's gonna copy and paste all the functions and commands in that library above all of your code. And so with this, the entire IO stream library is gonna be included here. And then right below that, it's gonna be the string library and then the CMath library. This is one of the reasons that, um, you know, you're encouraged not to include libraries that you're not gonna need. So sometimes, I see things where students, they they needed one or they thought they needed one, they included it and then ended up throwing out all that code because there's a way easier way to do it or something like that, and they leave these up here. It's not the end of the world, but it's just clutter, and it's including a whole bunch of lines of text that you don't need. So it's taking up space, taking up memory, and a little bit of, of executable time. So um, try to only include the libraries that you're actually using. Um, you can also download um, libraries that aren't necessarily just included. So maybe there's a special library that is specifically used for um, calculating uh, trajectories for satellites. So you're going to need a lot of a lot of 3D um, algebra or calculus, uh, calculating distances, things like that. And you'll need uh, things for gravity based on how far you are from Earth, if we're talking about satellites orbiting the Earth. And so there might be a whole bunch of special functions and also variables that are already defined in that library. And so you could just include that library and that, that way when you use some function, maybe it's a distance function or whatever, it knows that you're, it wants you to calculate the distance in 3D space with certain parameters that you'll pass into that function, maybe distance from Earth so it can determine what the gravitational effects are. So anyways, that's just a random example, but that's why you might want to include a specific library um, string, obviously we use that, CMath, I think this is often used for random number generation. So that's why you have include and that's what it does. We basically do the same thing when we use includes for .h files for classes, but we'll get to that in another video, we'll get to that later. Okay, so using namespace std. std just stands for standard and it's a, okay, all you're doing is telling it that we're using the standard namespace. So these libraries here are included in, in the standard library for C++. And so any functions that are in these guys are gonna be um, in the standard library and using standard namespace. You can actually create your own namespaces. So you could have a different namespace that did a C out function that functioned differently. And maybe, you know, it could be, you know, my, um, I don't know, call it my namespace C out and that's gonna be a different function than what we have down here. And since we used this namespace, it's prevented us, if we didn't have this, I'm just gonna comment it out. I'll comment out what I wrote here. And if we just tried executing this file, it's not gonna know undeclared identifier C out. So it, it's asking us, okay, did you mean, this is sublime text, it's just being helpful. Did you mean STD, standard library C out? And that is what we mean. So if we type STD colon colon C out, and we'll also have to do it here um, with this indel statement, STD colon colon, and then we compile it, it works. And so what all this is doing is telling it, okay, we're using the C out, this, which is a function, and we're using the one that's in the standard library which is in, it happens to be an IO stream. 
so it knows which function we're telling it. And if we created our own namespace, which is something you might do in the future, um, then you can kind of create your own your own function. And the reason that you do that is that maybe when you're printing something, when um, when you have a C out statement, you want it to do something particular, and you don't want it to do something this simple. And so you create your own. And so you might end up with okay, well this division of a company when they when they're using C out, they're they're always you know printing these x variables and so it'll always print out those variables and then maybe some comment or something like that which they put in there so that's the reason that you'll have different namespaces and why you might you know in the future you might not always be using you know the standard namespace uh, but for this class all you'll ever be using is the standard namespace and so to prevent you know finger fatigue and having to type std a million times when you don't have to for this class that's why we usually just use using namespace std and that just saves you from having to to do that so um, you can also see that if you do leave it in um, even if and you're using standard namespace it's not going to throw an error it still knows what you're talking about so anyways hope that helped and explained more of the background of what's going on with include statements and using namespace std